About to do some table work, people. A lot of stuff in detail will be down on our petachievers.com. The dogs have shown some behaviors I don't necessarily like. Uh, the puppies, to be clear. But when you see an opportunity to better your dogs, better your program, take advantage of it by simply doing the work. We're going to do the work. But uh, we're going into Sunday. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow the dogs turn eight weeks old. Let's talk real quick. Two things that are changing. I said before that, uh, you know, by now you guys got to know. I don't reply to comments. I appreciate the community of people that we have and those that are in support of our growth. Uh, if you are, I'm trying to find the nicest way to say this. If you are African American and you are inspired by what we're doing. For one, thank you. My goal is to make sure that you become an inspiration to your own life. And let me uh, paint a vivid picture here. I get messages at times with people. Let's watch your bubbles. Thank you. Uh, I get messages at times from, you know, my people. And they'll send a nice, they'll send a nice, hey, uh, going brother you know or be motivated don't worry I got it get they'll send a hey man be motivated I want to send you some words of encouragement like I'm not gonna tell you that I don't need any words of encouragement but I'm not one of them and let me be clear someone asked me years ago they said hey how did you get so confident See, some things, for those that believe or don't believe, I put on a shirt once a God-given. So I don't need, and that key word is need. Some people are like, man, I needed that. I've already been through enough to get up every day because I ain't got nothing to lose and I have the world to gain. So I, I don't need somebody, hey, keep going. No disrespect to those people who are like, yo, we appreciate you. You gotta quit living in your sorrows and all the things that went wrong in your life. Nobody cares if you do or don't do, but there's more viewers than doers. I don't need somebody saying, because I'm black. See, my dad taught me that being black was a superpower. So it, it literally irks me when someone says, you know, and I get that it's coming from a good place. Man, I just want you to keep going. I want you, I understand your intent, but I'm not them. See, I've come out of hiding. And I've been hiding because I, I, I knew this moment was gonna come. Not this particular one but where I was gonna be of need because you need authenticity. You need the truth. You need somebody who ain't gonna lie or hide nothing. That's what, that's what the world needs. There's no leadership. There's no Malcolm X. There's no, no, no great presidents. There's no fitness you know, guru. There's no so many things. The world's in disarray. So there's no one to technically look up to because all the authenticity, all the truth, it's been voided by, by way of social media. And that makes people like me sick, sick to my core. But what I don't need, and I mean this respectfully, is a pat on my fucking back. I don't need nobody to tell me to get up. I don't need no more confidence. My confidence could be perceived as arrogance, but the only arrogant thing about me is that I'll get up and do whatever needs to get done. I don't live in my excuses. Excuses are not solutions. And just to make sense of it a little bit more, that person who asked me about confidence, you know, I told, I, I thought about it and I said, man, when did this really start? And my parent, my grandparents, they passed a couple years ago during COVID, literally in 18 months. Both of them died. They were in their 90s. One was 89, one was 90. And um, I tell you this, I went home and I wanted to get them both on camera. It's probably one of my favorite videos a guy out did, but I said, you know, let me get them on camera. So if someone, meeting my grandparents, ever told me no, they said, as a child, I would say, what about tomorrow? So if you couldn't tell me no, at two years old, what makes you or anyone for that matter believe I'll be able to be told no as an adult? It, it's, it's almost improbable because I do not live under the pretense 
that I need someone to help get me up or words. Words are cheap. The cheapest thing on earth is someone's words. There is nothing louder than an action. I hate words to be clear. I hate I have to use words. But let's just, let me try to find, you know, when you try to find something in your phone, you can't find, you got too much stuff in here. But I had my grandparents sit down basically and have a conversation with me on camera and I, I told them thank you so much. Shortly after that, one of, those, one of those moments where you can go back and you can say, man, I'm glad that I got a chance to witness that, be there and experience that. A buddy of mine named Al, he's a voiceover that I use in that very thing as well. But objectively, as I'll find it at some point, and it might not be today, so when you do see it go up, understand, it's two 90-year-old people saying beyond a reasonable doubt, I'm not one of the people that needed convincing in regards to getting up and being better. That when they said no, I said, why not tomorrow? That if something ever got in my way, like my grandmother said, four years old, she said, I was pushing this boy on the swing and he said, I've had enough. I've always been unique in the way that I'm hard to... Um, Motivated if I don't want to do something, I'm just not doing it. I don't care what people think of me. I could care. That's why I'm saying I could care less about comments. I don't care what nobody else is doing. It's a Bernie Mac thing where he says, again, he goes, I don't care if you're burning a real business. The business is based on what the business is supposed to do. And we're running the business here. What these dog people are doing. There's a young man that called me. I rested me the other day. He's probably going to see this at some point. As soon as he, he called my phone, I said, hey, don't, don't send me any other page. He says, man, you got to, I just hate what they do with the dogs. I said, who cares? Who cares? The American bully is not a dog that people actually care about. It is a dog that people are using to be proud of and proud of a way that is egotistical. It's driven by, look at me. I don't want you looking at me. I told you before, my dogs ain't shit. And I do mean that. They're not. They're a step in the right direction and we have the utmost work to do, to be clear. The utmost work to do. We're at the very beginning stages with five years of work and we're not breeders. Over the next few years, we will literally only have tops 50 dogs, maybe, in three years. And I just revised the plan this morning so there might only be three breedings next year. Because you have to make sure these breedings match up and that they actually make sense and that they actually add value, change things, improve, get us closer to the overall goal, which is bettering every dog that we come in contact with on every dog that we want to build. And we do not do that randomly breeding or breeding two, three, four, five times. But I want to make sure you guys understand, especially the people who are in support and even more importantly, watching what we're doing. Guys, I don't need no pick me up. I pick everybody up. Well, somebody needs to pick you up. No, they don't. I can get up. My dad told me you always got two good feet. And I'm gonna always have two good feet. And if I lose a leg, I'll grab a cane and still keep moving. And the most powerful thing about having two good feet is I don't even need the feet. I just need my brain. And as long as I believe in me, as, as Kanye said, you know, people hate Ye right now. But he said, I believe in me. Just believe in you. If you don't like what I'm saying, fast forward. I'm in competition with no one. The other thing he said, I know people don't like Ye. I show up and play one on nobody. I'm not competing with the other dog men. I don't give a shit what they're doing, to be clear. I don't care what nobody's doing. This is a display by way of education of what our intent is and how we're going to change things. And it ain't going to be because somebody needs to be picked up. I already know what happened. I could go bankrupt and, st and that be strategic. See, there, there's, there's, there's so many things to this thing called life that people don't understand. And I'm blessed, to be clear, to have seen, learned, and applied so much information. Have, have gone through so much that at this point... I'm not going to tell you I'm unstoppable, but it'd be very difficult for something to happen and things literally change. And I'm talking about go downhill from there where there's no way out. And that's just that's just it's improbable to be clear. It's improbable. It's just not going to happen. So if you are taking care of your dogs, take care of your dogs and mind your business. If you are on a mission to better the breed, better the breed. If you think that partnering with other breeders and befriending them is, is going to move your business forward, do that. I don't think so. I don't think so. That's not my belief system. I don't believe because of them or me being everybody's friend, it's going to better me. I could care less what they're doing. It's none of my business because it's not in my business plan. 
let me reach all the breeders. For what? There's a lot of dogs in this world, and as Chris Moore said, we're 1% of 1% of 1%. Over 300 breeds, and the American Bully technically ain't even considered to be a breed. Not by the AKC, and realistically, not by anybody else. It's a composite breed, which means there's all kinds of stuff in there. And that's a good, bad, and ugly thing, depending on how you're looking at it, because the dogs ain't getting better. And that's not to say there ain't some great dogs out there. Let me be clear in saying, I wouldn't know. Because again, it's none of my business. And when you write up a business plan, guess what? You realize what needs, what the business needs to be focused on. And the one thing we don't focus on is partnering with people, knowing breeders, bothering other people's dogs, looking at other people's dogs. I don't care about nobody else's dogs. That's the truth. It's none of my business. If you can take some of the things that I'm saying, apply them as I don't tell anybody what to do, guess what? You can go on and better your dogs and keep bettering yourself. Someone says, hey, what book should I read? Spend time with your dog. No book prepared you for this life. No book is ever going to prepare you for this life. Half the things that we've gone through in this life, nobody was prepared for. I know I wasn't. And they prepared me for a lot. They actually gave me a lot of tools to make sure I stand out, that I speak up, that I stand for something. Mm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. All those things, and it's still not enough. So as we continue to get going, I want to encourage you, um, don't message me about other people's dogs. Don't send me other pages to look to. I turn message requests off now so nobody can even talk to me. I took my Snapchat off of TikTok. You can't message me on TikTok. You can't text me anymore. Calls have been turned off. There is going to be a very specific way that you can contact me and all contact moving forward will be done through our website or if you are part of our Pet Achievers Club, our pack. And if you are not, we have nothing to discuss because we're running a business. And here's the thing, as long as we focus on things that help better you and your dog, will always be of, of value. And value is not what we give, or it's not what we have, or what we, what we are, it's what we give. And mind you, we're not doing anything special. Somebody said, they keep saying, hey, you give out so much free game. Look, there's game everywhere. There's no game. It's just a lot of work. It's a lot of experience. It's a lot of opportunity to better ourselves slowly but surely. It's not, it's not free. I do a lot of the work. So what you're saying is, hey, thank you for doing all that wonderful research and helping us help our dogs. Thank you for, for making it make sense. Thank you for, for <laughs> addressing my impulsive buy to get a dog when I didn't even know what the dog is or how to take care of it. I didn't do my market research on the breed. I didn't know what to ask the breeder. And I've got this dog terrorizing my house. I mean, someone messaged me the other day, as I said before, and the dog bit their daughter. So much so that the dog had to be, I mean, the person had to uh, take the, dog, the daughter to the ER. And mind you, if you have a defensive dog, or if you get, in my opinion, again, some of the bulldog stuff, what do you think happens? Unfortunately, at times, the bulldog itself is a little defensive, which means it could be reactive. If it's mixed with confidence, aka something terrier style, now you have a dog that will respond versus just re reclude. And if it's not recluding, then it's probably going to cause some problems. And children are what? They're variables that you cannot, I repeat, you cannot control. A child is like a dog, especially because you've got 18 years of development to go through. You know what that means? You've got 18 years to try your best. <laughs> Key word. In 18 years, all you can hope for. After 18 years of work is praying your child potentially graduates high school. Then potentially goes on to college. 18 years of work for two moments. The day they graduate high school, in some cases. The day they figure out what they want to do, which might mean they go through four, six, seven years of college. Two moments. 18 years of work for two moments that make you feel good as a parent. And I think one moment you hope to never come in contact with is the fact they might go to jail one day. Because of some poor choices that they made. And then that probably makes you feel like a terrible parent. And you want a dog to be perfect in a year? Two years? 18 years for two moments. That's it. College and high school is the biggest moments in some cases that some kids live up to. You know how many people still say I'm the first to graduate college in my whole family? 300 relatives plus some family trees traced back to and only one person graduated college or 
Some cases, high school, stop it. Guys, you gotta, you gotta know where you're going, what you're doing, who you're doing it for. I'm going to find this video at some point, and when you see it in the shorts, you're gonna understand. And I might put it up after the end of this because I just can't find it. I literally can't find it. It's too many doggone videos. It's actually annoying me. But the point is, I wanted to come on here again and say, guys, we have a plan, which most people don't have a plan. I didn't buy dogs just cause. I understand how to breed. I understand how to make sure I, I, I take care of my team and protect everyone and set them up for success. I understand those things. I'm not guessing. And don't confuse this for arrogance. Simply put, I am not the one who needs this. Things are being perpetuated oftentimes in many communities. I understand what it means to be black. Trust me, I get it. But I also understand, and I don't know when to address it. But I also understand that it's a superpower. And until I die, I will always have a superpower. And I will use that power to empower others. The real key to actually being successful is to empower people. Be it a book, be it your words, be it your actions. And in this case, be it a dog. So stay tuned, take care of your dogs. Never get down on yourself. Don't have a bunch of people around picking you up all the time. Get out of your own damn head. Get out of your own damn way. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. If things ain't working in your life, it's probably because you ain't actually working in your life. And if you are working super hard and getting nothing, that means you're not working smart. And that is a whole nother thing. And some of y'all think, and people in general, hey, these things aren't happening the way I want them to. Why do you think that is? Probably because they ain't supposed to happen that way. Not everybody's going to be Jordan. Not everybody's going to be Tom Brady. Not everybody's going to be Ray Lewis. I could go down the line. Jordan. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, LeBron James. Will Ch you could go down the line. Gates. Bill uh, Gates. Rockefeller. Jobs. Carnegie. Larry Page. Reed Hoffman. Reed Hastings. Peter Thiel. <laughs> Not everybody's going to be any of these people. But the one thing you get to be is yourself. So be the best you can be. And as always, take care of yourself. And in this case... Keep taking care of those dogs.